bit background, I just want to uh, review with you that uh, Legionella pneumophila is a widely prevalent organism. It's found uh, widely in our natural water supplies. Um, it is predominantly a bug that affects patients who have underlying medical conditions that can be cardiac or respiratory, but in particular, uh, highly immunocompromised patients um, are most susceptible to Legionella disease. And it is a very challenging and difficult organism to eradicate from building water systems, not only hospitals, but other buildings that receive uh, municipal water supplies where Legionella are prevalent. Now, after the uh, 2016 cases that occurred at the UW Medical Center, uh, they implemented a very aggressive water management program that was based on very new guidance from the CDC. Uh, this is a voluntary uh, program. It's not required of healthcare facilities, but the UW very aggressively picked this up and um, has done a large amount of uh, monitoring, which you'll hear about uh, over the past year, and have taken actions to eliminate any Legionella that were detected in the water over this time frame. What the new cases tell us is that even very low levels of Legionella can pose a risk to highly immunocompromised patients. And uh, I also want to um, emphasize that this situation does not represent a risk to the general public. The disease uh, rarely, if ever, spreads from person to person. Uh, but we will be working, uh, public health will be working very closely with the UW Medical Center over the coming days and weeks to review and scrutinize the water management plan and the results of that sampling that's been done over the past years to try and identify any additional opportunities to further reduce the risk of Legionella to patients in the hospital. In addition, we'll be consulting with outside experts, including the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, on the water management plan and helping us identify whether or not we can do anything differently to further decrease the risk. At this point, I'm going to uh, pass the microphone over to Dr. Sager, who's going to uh, tell you a little bit more about what's happened at the University of Washington. Thank you, Jeff. Again, I'm Tom Steger, Medical Director at University of Washington Medical Center. We are confirming that we have two hospitalized patients with Legionella that was most likely acquired in the hospital. A third patient has also been diagnosed with Legionella pneumonia that we believe was acquired outside of the hospital. Two of the patients are in stable condition. One of the patients has unfortunately died. As noted on the Public Health Insider blog site, this patient was very ill and had multiple underlying conditions. The two patients are being treated with antibiotics for their pneumonia. A year ago, UW Medical Center identified five similar cases of Legionella pneumonia that were linked to the water system in one of our patient towers. After that outbreak, we went through a thorough cleansing process of the water system and implemented a robust water management system and instituted all of the best practices we committed to in our action plans. On a regular basis, we test and monitor our water system for temperature and for chlorine levels, uh, with every 10 minutes, the water in our water systems being monitored um, with alarms sent if they are outside of the appropriate range. And since we instituted this monitoring system last fall, the chlorine levels have not been out of the appropriate range. We are also uh, monitoring uh, regularly for uh, culturing water supplies for the presence of Legionella bacteria. When we have identified local low levels of the bacteria, we have treated the local site, such as a faucet, and then reevaluated the water quality and found it to be satisfactory. In the last year, in consultation with an external industrial hygiene expert, we have conducted nearly 500 water sample tests. These tests have not suggested that we have had a systemic issue with Legionella in our water supply. At this time, we don't know the exact source of Legionella. We are performing extensive environmental testing to identify and eliminate the source of these infections. Yesterday, based on what we learned, and in part from our experience with last year's event, we took several steps to protect our patients, staff, and visitors 
including restricting use of water in patient rooms in the affected tower to hand washing and using the toilet. All patients, families, and visitors are using bottled water for drinking. We are fitting all showers and sinks with special filters to filter for bacteria. We are thoroughly testing sinks, ice machines, and other water sources in this particular tower, and we should have preliminary results next week and more definitive results in two weeks. We have alerted all of our providers to consider Legionella pneumonia in patients with pneumonia. All sputum tests are being screened for Legionella pneumonia. And we have notified all patients in this tower that we have identified Legionella pneumonia in three patients. As Dr. Duchin said, Legionella is rarely, if ever, transmitted from person to person. It is typically spread through aerosolized water droplets, such as steam in showers or hot tubs. It is treated with antibiotics. We anticipate that we will identify the source of these bacteria and that we will be able to, in partnership with public health and outside experts, to successfully treat it. We will continue to seek additional outside help to help with this issue. Patients and staff safety are our utmost concern. That, that was a patient who contracted it at the hospital. At the hospital. Yes. Uh, Dr. Steger, when you talk about um, where this is occurring, is it in the Cascade Tower as well as the ones last year? Th that's correct. Um, what's your message to patients and their families? We've seen um, some family members, you know, posting online saying they're concerned, you know, should their family member be at the hospital, is it safe there? Um, especially for patients who might have compromised immune systems. Sure, and I, you know, I, I, um, I would expect that patients and families would have concerns in circumstances like this. Um, we believe that the measures that we have put in place um, to restrict water, to put, uh, to not allow the water to be used until special filters are in place, um, have made it safe for our patients, families, and staff to be in the Cascade Tower and to continue to receive care there. Could you explain that a little bit more in depth, Doctor, because you were giving us a lot of information sure. there, and we've seen pictures of the postings of faucets and things like that, because we read that this bacteria can be passed along in mist and things like that, so you think, okay, even if I'm using water in a limited kind of way, could this water, you know, mist and I, and I could inhale it? Can you talk about the specific steps and, and how people are protected? Sure. So. Um, we are not allowing patients to use showers until the filters have been installed. We are not allowing patients or families um, to drink out of faucets in the rooms um, or to use that water for um, brushing teeth, for example, until special filters have been installed. Um, we do, in a consultation with internal and external experts, feel that it is safer to allow um, staff to continue to wash their hands as needed um, using these sinks that the risk of aerosolization of mists in that setting is sufficiently low that it's safer to continue hand washing um, using those sinks. Um, but we are uh, in the process starting today with installing filters on those sinks as well, and we'll be doing that throughout the Cascade Tower. Do you anticipate those, when do you anticipate all those filters will be installed? Uh, sometime next week. We're starting today. We had to order additional filters, so um, I would anticipate um, by uh, next week, you know, certainly by the end of the week and, and hopefully sooner than that, that they will all be installed. And so you talk about patients not taking We, yeah, we have alternative uh, ways that people can bathe, and, and we also have some showers in, in um, our uh, other tower that, that has not been affected that, that can be made accessible to certain patients. Doctor, you talk about this in-depth water monitoring system that, that you implemented yep. since the cases last year. Did it detect any Legionella bacteria right before these cases popped up that might have been a warning sign? 
uh, it on occasion. So we've done 500 or so um, cultures over the last year, and a small number of those have um, shown small numbers of Legionella bacteria in various sites. Um, and, and we did cultures as recently as the beginning of July throughout the Cascade Tower, um, and uh, I think four of roughly 35 cultures had very, very low levels of bacteria in them, and then we went and did subsequent cleaning and eradication of those sites. Uh, so the levels that we have seen now are a tenth to a hundredth of what we saw last year. Last year we saw levels in, in the 30 to 50 colony forming units per milliliter of water. Um, recently we've seen between 0.2 colony forming units per milliliter of water to around three. So they've been a factor of 10 to 100 times lower than what we saw last year. I, I would comment on your first question, which was that, that uh, this episode proves that low levels, even low level exposures are unsafe. At this point, uh, we're not certain of that. We still need to get the results back from our current monitoring to figure out if somehow there was a rise in bacteria that occurred since the beginning of July. We don't think that's the case, but I think it's probably early to, for us to be absolutely certain that even low levels were the cause of these infections, but that's something we're looking carefully at. So whether it was the low levels that caused this or there was some kind of spike. Yeah, and, and it's too early for us to say, but, but we will know that by the time we've got our cultures results back. Okay. I have a question for Dr. Dusen. Um, King County obviously oversees several different medical facilities, many of which have patients with you know, weak immune systems, yet this is you know, a year later after having it at the same tower, we're seeing it there again. Uh, what does that say to you and, and what next steps do you take uh, to keep it from happening at this size? Yeah. Thanks for the question. So let me just clarify roles and responsibilities first. Public Health Seattle King County does not oversee healthcare facilities. That's the Washington State Department of Health. So you might want to talk with the Health Systems Licensing Authority there about oversight. We um, respond to reports and help facilities investigate and then respond to and eliminate any risk from communicable disease outbreaks or cases. So um, what it tells me though, what this situation tells me is uh, reinforces the difficulty in dealing with a, a Legionella, a very complicated bug to deal with. It can establish a long-term um, residency in uh, building water systems, and it's also important to understand that it's not just this hospital, uh, but any building that can harbor Legionella, and this hospital and other hospitals that have water management plans are probably suppressing Legionella to levels that are much lower than you would find out elsewhere in the community, where Legionella also can colonize water systems, including homes and other types of buildings where water is available. But uh, what it tells us is we have a lot to learn about Legionella and in the best ways to suppress it. The guidance that the University of Washington Medical Center is using to establish their water management plan and the steps they take are based on brand new guidance from the CDC. It just came out. And so we're using this as a, um, a learning experience to say, okay, we've taken this state-of-the-art recommendation on how to monitor for and suppress Legionella in the water system. We have some new cases. How can we figure out what went wrong here? Um, as Dr. Sager mentioned, was there a spike that happened that you know is something that we, we didn't anticipate and then how did that occur and how do we prevent that from occurring? Or in fact, is this um, telling us that even low levels um, present some risk? So over the coming days and weeks as we analyze the data that we have available, from the water monitoring program that's been done here at the Medical Center and consult with um, our colleagues at the CDC and the Washington State Department of Health Water System, we'll try and sort that out. Are there cases at other medical facilities in King County that maybe we in media just haven't heard about? 
There are no, we, we're not aware of other hospital acquired cases at the moment. There are always, you know, cases that occur in the community throughout the year. I do not know of other hospital acquired cases in the past year. Um, we can double check on that, but I don't believe we've had any. Well, not the ones that I should say, I don't believe we've had any that you're not already aware of. There were some last year that you were aware of, yeah. Uh, Dr. Newsom and Dr. Sager, um, is there anything particular to Cascade Tower that makes it different, that makes it more likely to have this, or is it really just the fact that it was there and it's just very difficult to eradicate the bacteria completely? I'm not personally aware of anything, sorry, I, I'm not personally aware of anything that is different about the Cascade Tower that would make it susceptible to uh, these kinds of infections. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's the sense that perhaps it's just very difficult to eradicate it once it's somewhere? Yeah. So, yeah, as I said, Legionella um, is common in the environment and water systems in general. It colonizes water systems. Many water systems in the community have Legionella in them. Again, most people um, do not develop Legionnaire's disease because they have he healthy immune systems and relatively healthy heart and lungs. Uh, so uh, the fact that it's in the hospital water system is not surprising because it's known to um, occur in water systems in general. There's nothing in particular about Cascade that we're aware of that makes it at increased risk compared to other similarly complex buildings. And Dr. Sager, did you mention earlier when it comes to those um, immunocompromised patients who might be more likely to be susceptible to this, are, are you doing anything specific for them? Are you moving them to a different tower or a different site um, just because they're, they're more susceptible? We, we are working with our internal infectious disease experts um, to pr provide prophylactic antibiotics for some of the high-risk patients. Some, some of our high-risk patients are already on protective antibiotics, um, but we are working with our infectious disease consultants to determine if there are patients who aren't already on protective antibiotics that should be on them. Yeah, we, we don't know yet, but we will be examining and, and serotyping the bacteria to find out if it was the same strain or not. So I just one more question. Um, you said that uh, Legionella is found in commonly in water systems. So is our location, being in this Pacific Northwest, does that have any influencing factor? Uh, the Pacific Northwest is not known to be a hot spot for Legionnaires. It's more, co much more common in other parts of the country. So if there's no other questions, I think we'll thank you all for coming today. We appreciate your being here, getting the word out for us, and we will follow up with you as we get new information uh, next week. Thanks very much. Thank you.